So I'm back in the garden. Um, it is always a treat to get a chance to take some time away. If you're looking at your plants every day, uh, what a treat it is. Uh, I just have taken, let's see, uh, I was I left Friday and it's uh, Sunday. So uh, not a super long time, but uh, congratulations to me. I got married over the weekend. And so I'm just, I just got back to the garden and it's so fun to see what, uh, when you have this kind of what feels like a huge leap because you don't really notice on a day to day level sometimes what's going on with your plants. And it just looks so cool to take that bigger leap. It just sort of feels like everything's been sped up a little in a cool way. So, uh, anyway, things are looking good. It's rained a lot, uh, which is good for me. I'm trying to do as little watering as possible. I don't do that much watering. But things are looking peppy. And so, uh, there's some stuff I'm kind of interested in checking back on there's i planted some bitter gourd bitter melon goya as it's called in japanese this is the um food that uh, is famous in okinawa uh, they say that that's what causes okinawans to have the highest number of uh citizens over the age of 100. uh yeah i Anyway, it's a uh, bitter melon, sometimes what it's called, bitter gourd. Uh, I don't know if it's coming up. <laughs> uh, I don't, honestly don't remember what else I planted over here. I know there was some stuff, but we'll see what actually takes. Um, trying to get a few more uh, peppos in. I would like to see some more sea peppo, zucchini looking stuff in particular. Uh, but things are looking really cool. Soybeans coming up. How many food plants can you identify in this area? This is sesame here, starting to flower. These are pretty late additions but it's looking good. It's fun to look at. Lots of different food plants growing together. Some weeds, some stuff's doing well, some stuff's petering, petering down, slowing down, winding down. Or maybe just looking a little ugly, a little ugly during this season. Here's the watermelon grex. Uh, seems to be doing pretty well. I might put a little fertilizer down before I go on my honeymoon tomorrow. We're going to Glacier National Park, which is gonna be uh, really cool. Um, let's see what's going on here. I know there was a squash that to get pretty big yeah that's yeah overgrown at this point so that's the kind of thing that you could save seed from probably already um and i might pick that because it's yeah it's got viable seeds i'm sure but um who knows what else is what else is going on over here uh this is an area where i planted uh, some stuff. I actually don't remember. And I guess that's okay. Oh, I did beets and stuff like that here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can see some, right? There's one. There's one. There. There. So this is a beet grex. Um, and I think the timing for this is going to be quite nice, actually. <sighs> I don't remember what else I planted here. Oh, spinach. Yeah, here's here's a and then spinach grex over here. 
I wouldn't even call it a Grex yet. I think these are just named varieties that I'm trying to get going. Uh, with a little more, yeah, a, a more uh, genetically diverse. We're looking to make a Grex, that's what I'm saying. Uh, oh yeah, there's all sorts of beets germinating here, so. Beets uh, have good germination here. They're off to the races. Looks like some little uh, tobacco is germinated there as well. So, a few tomatoes? No, that's, that's it. Beet, too, I guess. So, uh, yeah, it's popping through the grass. I was a little worried that I'd put it down a little too, too heavy, too much grass. And there may be some spots where that happens. But uh, these were just, yeah, surface sown and seem to be doing pretty good. So, I'm glad to see that. So yeah, maybe there's something to be said for taking a little time off from looking at things. Because uh, this is really fun. It almost feels like my view of the garden is kind of distorted by time. There's uh, some acorn squash. There's a delicata there. Everything... Looking pretty good. Let's, there's some pokeweed. Might make some JLF out of that. Happy to see you. Thank you for your contributions. Uh, sunflower seed. Oh. Well, I should pull this because it's getting, getting eaten already. So that, that looks pretty much done anyway. So that's cool. Uh, this bohemia. So here, of course, is doing crazy good. Not much to say about that. Set it and forget it. Peppers. Not a ton of yield here yet. Or on this one. So I'm not sure what's going on. Those look good. There's some more. Cherry tomatoes, for me, are very easy to grow. That's one where I do not have to worry about cherry tomatoes. Lettuce, going to seed there, looking cool. Let's see. So at this point in the season, yeah, for me, my main goal is to just kind of keep things dense uh, and the soil covered, that you can get a level of coverage where you're gonna have a pretty shady sort of understory. And that's gonna help to keep the soil damp and uh, allow for good conditions of microbial life, microbial and fungal life. That's good. Um, this stuff over here, let's take a look. Not doing, not doing super great. Uh, some carrots that I planted. These were name varieties. And it's like uh, such a bummer for me to plant carrots without a ton of seed. Because that for me is sort of the way to do carrots. Is to just not push it too much. But just throw out a lot of seed and see what happens by accident, basically. Anyway, th those, those have taken... Uh, but I, you know, it's like there was a row here, and well, you can see some more over there, I guess. Uh, yeah, carrots are tricky. Germination is sporadic. If you know this, you know this. Give it a shot. Oh, yeah, okay. That's so weird there is. But it's like some, some of the rows, I don't see any carrots. So, this soil is looking a little, a little too bare. I'll probably coat it with some grass tomorrow. And mow the lawn. Uh, so I don't remember. I planted some fennel over here as well, and I don't really see anything coming up. So uh, fennel might be a miss so far. I would like that's fennel's one. I would love to have a good like population of you know just because I love to eat it. It's really good fennel salad. Let's see. 
Yeah, tomatoes. I, you know, failed to get the varieties that I wanted. I didn't do, I didn't really do seedlings, or I did a tray of seedlings, and it was like, nothing worked. Uh, I just used, I knew, I knew it was a bad idea. I used only peat moss. Uh, anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't, seedlings are, it's a bummer. I would like to do less of that. Uh, at least the way I see it, there doesn't seem to be a good way of doing it, um, without using imported inputs. And I guess I just, I just don't think that it has to be that way. I don't think that there have to be so many. I don't, I think that you should be able to do it, uh, the whole, the whole process with whatever you have on hand with dirt. So, I, but I don't know how to do, if it's like you're doing it as a seedling. I don't think that, and I don't, I don't want my system to be set up so that I need to buy potting soil, whatever, you know, seedling soil. Uh, and so I guess, yeah, I'm trying to either get away from doing seedlings at all, because I think, you know, direct into the dirt is the best way to go. Observationally, it seems to be the way to go in terms of getting strong plants, at least the way I'm trying to grow here. Uh, so that's something to work on in the future in terms of, I don't know, if I'm going to do seedlings. Because it is fun, that's the thing though, right? And I don't have a greenhouse, and if I did, I would probably love it. Uh, but for right now, I'm like, I just, I don't, I want, I want to find, you know, the system that should be sort of stupidly simple, right? And I, don't, I think that you, doing seedlings is not the way forward. It's because that's, that's this coddling that's like a little too unnecessary. Uh, I mean, there's some stuff that, you know, you really do get some bang for the buck by starting early, you know? Uh, tomatoes, tobacco, stuff with really small seeds. Uh, but it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that, I don't want to have to do it. I think that the, you know, the, the most elegant way is to just do everything in its own season. Right, if there's something that you can that you can select for stuff that produces in a season, right, without having to coddle it, without having to grow it earlier. And I mean, an example of that is just you know like plant size. I think people have sort of a distorted view of plant size because it's like you can go tall and you know, get X number of tomatoes, or you can go wide and get the same number of tomatoes, but it's like, you know, the sun's only hitting a certain amount of surface area, right? So I just think that, it doesn't matter. You can grow small plants, right? And small plants grow quickly. Uh, I mean, so, you know, here we have an example of this, right? You can grow, these are all Maximas, and these will, you know, they're, it's pretty crowded. I did this intentionally to get a good Grex going, but, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're gonna maybe only produce one fruit each, uh, the way I'm doing this, but that's all right, because that's, you know, we want more diversity anyway. So, uh more plants, but yeah, less fruits per plant is essentially what I'm uh, sprecking to you here, okay? So, um, we'll see what happens here. I'm going to probably take off a few leaves here and there, maybe, you know, take one leaf off from each of these, because it is starting to get a little crowded but I want everything, but there's, you know, this is creating a pretty serious understory here. There are some that are kind of getting left behind. They're a little slower, maybe. But man, this is, yeah, this is really taking off, and 
I'm excited to grow Maximas this way. And by this way, I mean after squash borer season is over, basically. Um, so it's the mad dash to the fall. So these were planted not too long ago, maybe two weeks ago. And uh, I, you know, I've kind of been trying to pump them up with some JLF liquid fertilizer, homemade. This is, you know, a closed loop product that you can make yourself. So um, happy, happy to see what's going on here, and hopefully, finally get, you know, some good, good crops of those like cootie style um, maximas or yeah, kabocha type uh, maximas. And most importantly, get some seeds. I would like to have a lot of seeds of this. So um, I think that, yeah, it's, especially, I mean, how fast it grows with this, I think that it's a good, it's be a pretty cool idea to just um, grow a bunch, grow them close to each other in July or right whenever whenever you're in the safe zone and to just get yeah, a short season version of these and do lots of plants. Some of them, yeah, I don't know, croak. That's the thing about Maximas here. Like I just they I have this fear that <laughs> maybe it's like psychological. Maybe I'm expressing this fear to the plants. But I wanna say right now that I'm really proud of them. They're huge and they look good and I'm gonna be really happy to get these seeds. So positivity to you, Cucurbita maxima, Grex, in the making. Uh, well, I do. You know, I've got a, I've got a C maxima Grex going, I guess already. But I would say this is more specifically, you know, the Japanese style Kuri type ones. So uh, it's going to be cool. This is corn. This is uh, my version of Astronomy Domine. Uh, a la Lofthouse. So this came from Lofthouse. He got it from Alan Bishop. And yeah, it's coming up. I don't know. This is the Teosinte over here. I might have, I might have uh, in, totally infected uh, sweet corn, or it won't be sweet corn uh, if it gets the wrong pollen. So, I I want the teosinte though, probably more than I said. If I have a teosinte infused uh, sweet corn mix, that could be, I guess, you know, it could be interesting. Maybe not so usable, but interesting down the line. Anyway, um, feels good under my feet. It's like uh, there's a certain softness to it, and. It feels good. Oh, let's take a look at yeah my other little area of some more maximas that I'm trying to get going. That is here. Okay. So yeah, some things are winning out over others, and that's cool. I'm gonna remove this because. They don't want that going in that area. There, you get some. Uh, okay, yeah, so these are Japanese style uh, moshada. And they're looking healthy. Here's a bunch of stuff. Uh, I think there's some cucumber in here. Yeah, those are quite visible. Uh, some Maxima and some, yeah, this, this is some homemade Maxima seed that I'm trying to get going and things are looking good. The weeds, it is what it is. I might try and cover something up if I need to, but I think the plants are going to win this one. I think the food plants, you know, they just have nice wide leaves. It's a cool strategy. Some corn is starting to almost look done. We'll see. I get some beautiful cobs. And yeah, some stuff down. I know now not to mess with it though. That uh, the, le the less you mess with it, the more it's a chance it has of standing back up straight on its own. You just disrupt nature if you try and 
make it happen. So we'll see. Uh, so yeah, good looking, healthy plants in various places. Yeah, some more bunkins. Some beans I planted. So we're gonna crawl up the trellis. This is, these are long beans. Yeah, so happy to be here. Happy growing to you all. <laughs>